Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to another video where today I'm going to be sharing and upgrading a brand new e-bike. I'm so excited, so let's dive straight into some action. How insane does the new bike look? I've been waiting for this to arrive since February. I was lucky enough to actually ride it in Corsica whilst we was out there shooting for high bike. And since then, that's all I've wanted to get my hands on. Unfortunately, it was delayed arriving here slightly because of the coronavirus, COVID-19, but nonetheless, it's eventually arrived and it's now here in the bike stand, ready to go. Not only does it look great, there's a whole load of new features on here which make this bike ride, feel, look, just, it's just insane. I can't wait to dive into it all and explain the, the nitty gritty details which you can't see just by looking at it. All ready to go, we have Halo Vortex wheels, gusset components, we have S2 pedals in there, disc brake adapters, once again I'll explain those in a second, S2 saddle and S2 bars with, oh, them bad boys again. Matching, we've got petrol there, petrol up here, yellow stickers, yellow stickers, yellow stickers on the frame. As you can tell, I'm a little bit excited to get this bike together. Let's kickstart proceedings by taking the old wheels out of the bike. We're using the Halo Vortex 27.5 inch on the rear, 29 up front. That's one of the key changes with this bike is it is run with a mullet setup. I'm going to touch more on that later because that's a interesting feature with a lot of benefits so we'll go more into detail with that shortly i run these wheels on all of my bikes you've got super drive rear hub 120 points of engagement super important for the e-bike because with the motor the torque levels are increased so to have a hub which i know is not going to skip or fail is just really important they're super lightweight super strong and my favorite feature has to be the fact that the graphics are customizable so i've got the yellow stickers on the black rims which matches the bike perfectly and it, i just can't wait to get them in the bike i think it's going to look absolutely amazing these are being run tubeless muck off valves in this petrol color which yeah i've got it on another bike and i really like at the moment shawby eddy current e-bike specific tires in a soft compound they're 2.6 inches wide with a really knobbly tread pattern and they're an e-bike specific tire which I actually really can feel the benefits of. I put these on my other e-bike recently and the difference was insane. The sidewalls are much stronger because obviously the e-bike weighs a lot more and the bike just felt a lot more stable and just seemed to roll much better. So if you haven't, if you ride an e-bike and you haven't tried e-bike specific tires, I would highly recommend it. Let's get the hardware fitted to these and get them in the bike because I can't wait to see what the black and yellow theme is gonna look like. First bit of hardware that we're going to be fitting to the wheel set is the cassette and that is a 12 speed from Shimano. Lovely looking bit of kit and even on this I've noticed a step forward in technology. Its fitment is a micro spline which I've never seen before. What I would imagine the benefit is, is that the splines are smaller and closer together which takes the stress away from a HG drive which is where they are wider apart and less of them obviously they're under more stress so technology moving things forward even within a cassette let's get a fit to the bike and see what it looks like you guys are probably watching this now saying how's he never seen micro spline it's been around forever it might well have been around for a while but i've just never come across it so if you've seen it before and i'm just living in the dinosaur age then please let me know in the comments <laughs> and that is looking unbelievable don't need to go overly tight with that let's get the discs fitted so I need to come over to the table of goodies and grab one of these, which is an adapter that allows me to go from center lock to six bolt. If you look on here, the disc mounting is center lock, which is another system from Shimano. And I don't have center lock brakes to run. The reason these hubs have a center locking mount and not a six bolt pattern is because of the micro spline driver, both a Shimano system and Halo at the moment only make the one hub which caters for both. But that's no panic because they make the adapter saving anyone that wants to run micro spline and six bolt rotors. Let's get this unpackaged and see how it fits because I've never used one before. So what have we got? The bit that goes onto the, onto the mount spacer. 
and then we have the locking ring. I actually did the wheel a minute ago because I've never fitted one of these systems before and I did get a little bit confused on the last one. When I'm working on the bike and the discs are off, I keep them in the protectors because I'm really paranoid about them getting contaminated. So this just completely removes the risk of that. So what we're gonna do is put the black bit of the adapter with these lugs that stick out. They stay on the mount, they don't come off. Then you add your rotor to the mix. There we go, the rotor's on. Then you get this plate and that just sits on the front like so. Then finally you grab the center locking ring, which just goes on there. Lovely, 40 newton meters of torque. So I've got the torque wrench out so we get it nice and precise. Wait for that to click. There we go, center locking mount fitted. That's the dream, let's get it in the bike. Wow, look at how nice that looks. The color scheme, it's unbelievable. That yellow and black just looks fire. And then the match between the halo stickers, and it just, it just works so good. Next up, let's dive straight in and switch these handlebars over with the fresh S2 bad boys. <whistles> Get the old bar and stem off then. Drop that off. There we have it, bars and stem all fitted. Take a look at that. It looks unbelievable, especially because they're gloss black against the gloss black frame. Don't know, just looks insane. Let's unbox these new pedals then. They're the old ones. Basically, just no pins on them, which means that a lack of grip would occur. S2, open those up. Oh, this could be a difficult one-handed. We'll try. Give it a good shake, lovely. There we go. So straight away, what I said, look at the difference in the pins. Massive, way better bearings, way nicer design. They feel, they honestly feel amazing on your feet. There we have it, pedals fitted, and that is all of the upgrades installed. And my God, it looks unbelievable. What we're gonna do now, cut to some music and some arty shots of the bike looking amazing. And then we're gonna sit down and talk about the features and things that High Bike have changed for this year. As you can see, this bike is quite a bit different to the one that I was using last year. It's powered by the brand new Bosch Gen 4 motor, which is run off a 625 watt hour battery and producing 75 Newton meters of torque. The things I could say that I noticed about this motor is that it's very, very smooth. It's very smooth power delivery. And the biggest one that I noticed is when you reach the speed limit, which is 15 mile an hour or 25 kilometers an hour, then it's very gentle. The old ones seem to reach it and then just stop and then when you came back into it, it kicked in so it creates like a rubber band effect whereas this one doesn't do that it's very very smooth the other big difference with this one compared to my old one is that the battery is internal whereas on the other one it was on the outside of the frame let's talk about the frame it looks quite a big bike it's in a size medium this space here is basically for a range extender so you can clip another battery on which when it's all connected up will just run and you don't need to take it out and change it over. So that's really good because it extends the amount that you can ride. I can't remember the exact figures, but I think it's gonna be a video that I'm gonna do in the future for sure. So if that's something you're interested in, keep an eye out. Like I say, it looks a big bike, but don't be fooled because the geometry makes it so, so, so nimble. And High Bike have been very clever with the way that they've done this. First of all, the center of gravity is very low. So the battery within the tube finishes right at the bottom. The motor is very low. Basically all the really heavy components on this bike have been moved to the bottom. What that does, when they're all at the bottom, it means that the top will turn a lot easier. If you have your weight higher, then it's slower to move. So bringing all that down has made the bike very, very nimble. It's a bit misdeceiving because like I say, it looks a big frame. I'd normally ride a small, but the medium is very, very nimble and easy to throw around, which is really nice for hitting turns. The next thing to talk about with the frame is the rear triangle, which isn't actually a triangle. It's a hexagon for strength. It's a unique thing that high bike do and 
yeah, it actually looks really cool. The next big change on this bike is the mullet setup. So the 27 and a half inch rear wheel and the 29 inch front wheel. I'd never ridden a bike even with 29 inch wheels because I just find that they're a little bit too big for me, but not in this setup. What are the advantages? Basically, you can roll down things which are much, much steeper. If you imagine when you're on a steep slope, if you had a smaller back wheel, if you over exaggerated it and had a tiny back wheel or a huge front wheel, it makes the bike more level so it stops you being so far over the handlebars. And honestly, the things, Corsica was pretty rough terrain that we was riding on, real rocky. Um, and the things that this wagon wheel, if you like, will go over is unbelievable and it handles the same. It's so, this is what I mean about this bike, it's very nimble and very reactive, which considering the features it has for stability and the size of it, just it just ticks all the boxes it really is very very nice to ride the next upgrade on this bike which i really really like is where the magnet is placed for the speed sensor on the rear wheel it's on the inside of the rear disc brake so completely out of the way you can't damage it which is it look it just looks tidier as well it's a real smart clever design i think being tucked away there other features i like off the top of my head 12 speed shimano with the micro spline just seems like a very logical clever upgrade um, and the same with the mounting of the rear brake it's inside the rear hexagon because there's enough space to put it there and it just keeps it out of the way it avoids any damages i'm really stoked with this bike i've been super excited for it to arrive i've been waiting a long time because of this virus but it is finally here and i can't wait for the trails to reopen and to get out on this beast shred it and get some sick videos out there for you guys to keep you entertained. So give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, leave some comments below, and I will see you guys in the next one.